A town is full of buildings, some tall, some short, some wide, and some narrow. The buildings are flats and houses and factories and shops. They're built in streets. The streets have cars and buses and lorries driving along them. The cars and buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Mary? Mungo and Midge live in this town. They live with Mary's mother and father in this tall block of flats. They live right at the top. There are eight flats built on top of each other. Mary, Mungo and Midge live in the flat with the flowers growing in the window box. There's Mary. There's Mungo. And there's Midge. Mary, Mungo and Midge have a large sunny room to play in. A room full of games and toys and picture books. Mary's always got something to do. Today she's showing Mungo her new picture book of nursery rhymes. Look Mungo, here's a nursery rhyme for you. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her poor dog a bone. When she got there, the cupboard was bare and so the poor dog had none. Here's a nursery rhyme for you, Mary. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. Now we need one for Midge. Where is he? Mary's other friend is Midge Mouse. He's usually very difficult to find because he's so small and runs very quickly. He's inquisitive. That means he's always trying to find out things. Ah, there he is. He's jumped on top of Mungo's head. He's got his flute, but he's only learnt to play one tune so far. You listen. Midge, stop playing that same old tune. We've got something here for you. For me? It's a nursery rhyme about a mouse. Can you guess what it is? A mouse. A mouse. Hickory dickory dock. A mouse ran up the clock. There's a picture of a clock in this book. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. Dong. The mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. But the hands aren't pointing to one o'clock. No, Midge. But you can move the hands on this clock like this. Can you put them in the right place? Well, the long hand has to point straight up. Like that. That's right. And the shorthand goes there. Is that one o'clock? No, that's six o'clock. Well, let me see now. Is that one o'clock? No, that's three o'clock. Midge, you're just guessing. No, I'm not. I was just finding out if you could tell the time. Here's one o'clock. Here. That's, that's right. right. Now, hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. Dong. The mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. That's a good game, isn't it, Midge? Yes, but listen. There's the real clock in the hall striking. I'll go and run up and down that. Ooh. I wonder if I can move the hands on this clock. No, Midge. You mustn't move the hands. Midge, 
You'll break it. Oh, it stopped. Oh, I've broken it. Oh, I'd better get inside and mend it before anybody finds out. Midge knew that when the clock was working properly, the pendulum swung first to one side and then to the other. So he thought all he had to do to make the clock work again was to make the pendulum swing. Oh, oh dear. Oh, I, I can't move it. I'd better find out what else there is inside a clock to make it work. Goodness me. What a lot of wheels. Now what do I do? That's funny. The clock struck one a few minutes ago, and now it says five to two. Hmm. The clock went on saying five to two all day. Midge was very busy inside it, trying to make it work. He was also a bit frightened to come out, because he knew he really shouldn't have moved the hands. At tea time, Mary's mother looked at the clock. It said five to two. When Mary's father came home, he looked at the clock. It said five to two. At bedtime, Mary looked at the clock. It still said five to two. This clock needs winding up. No, it's still not going. I'll have to get the man from the clock shop to mend it. Midge didn't hear that because he was fast asleep. He slept in the clock all night. The next day, two men from the clock shop came to take the clock away. Midge was awake by now, but he was still inside. Very delicate, these grandfather clocks. We'll have to move it very carefully. Don't knock it, Mr. Coggins. Don't drop it, Fred. As Mary and her family live in a flat right at the top of the building, they go down to the street by lift. Midge was very fond of the lift, but it was the first time he'd gone down inside a clock. Please will you bring the clock back quickly? We'll try and bring it back this afternoon, miss. Because Midge had been asleep, he didn't know that the clock was to be taken to the shop. He heard some doors close and an engine start. Midge felt the clock being taken out of the van and through a door. And then it was still and quiet. Midge waited for a bit. Then he opened the door and saw clocks. Clocks. Clocks everywhere. I've never seen so many clocks. There's a little house on the wall up there. I wonder if there's anyone at home. Hello, please. Where am I? That's no good, Midge. He's only a cuckoo in a cuckoo clock. here are saying a different time and some can't even tick properly. It must be a sort of clock hospital. Our grandfather clock has come here to be mended because I broke it. 
Perhaps I could find something to mend it with in that box of old clock bits. Mitch had been playing, the men in the clock shop had mended the clock. Seems all right now, Mr. Coggins. Ah, yes. If you ask me, someone must have been playing around with the hands. The pendulum's swinging all right anyway, Mr. Coggins. Yes, we'll keep the clock here until four o'clock to make sure it keeps good time. Midge tried to make friends with the cuckoo again. Hello. And cuckoo to you too. Careful, Midge. Yes. Now, go back and look after your own clock. And mind you don't break it again. There it is. But don't touch anything. Just look after it. So Midge stood by the pendulum and looked after the clock. After a while, he got a bit sleepy, so that he never heard four o'clock striking. And the clock man saying, Seems to be working well now, Fred. Uh, we'll take it back. Oh, I expect that's the grandfather clock coming back. And I expect Midge will be back as well. Mungo, you don't think Midge stopped the clock? Whatever he's been doing, he'll just pretend he's been looking after it. I did look after it. I went to the clock hospital. Repair shop. Well, it's a sort of hospital for clocks. And our grandfather clock is mended and well again. Come and see. There, you see? It's working beautifully. Hmm, yes. I wonder why it stopped yesterday. Well, if you ask me, um, somebody... Yes, well, um, somebody was uh, playing around with the hands. I wonder who. Well, whoever it was, I'm sure he won't do it again, will he? No, Mary, I know he won't. Thank you.